and then if you die you just completely reset again it's like a, a roguelike dungeon crawler basically and you can like it's kind of like sort of like streets of rage-esque and you can kind of pick up enemies weapons and stuff like that really unique game this one this copy is in really really good condition actually other than the sticker on the front which really looks like uh, interestingly enough it looks like it's under the plastic oh no it's not it's just really on there i'll have to get that off at some point but yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, um, this is probably one of my more treasured games, shall we say. Again with the Harry Potter series, Prisoner of Azkaban. Not played it yet. Need to really give it a go. This one had, uh, yeah, some functionality with the eye toy as well. This one's remained in a cupboard for a while, so it was just a bit dusty, to be honest. Oh, you can fly Buckbeak as well in it, yeah, but yeah, I, I mentioned earlier that as these games went along, like, the graphics seem to just get a bit more, like, more and more ma mature looking, like, as as the books got a bit more mature as they went along, so, yeah, it's one I'll probably give a try at some point. Next two games, The Red Star, now, I can't remember which one works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I basically, I got, I wanted this for ages, I got a copy, popped it in, wouldn't bloody play. I'd only paid like a couple of quid for it, so I wasn't too bothered, and then ended up buying another copy at some point. Can't remember which one it is. That's really confusing. I should have really... Yeah, because that's just going to be a ball as soon as I want to play it again. But yeah, this game is awesome. It was actually on the PSP as well. I noticed on the, the Vita store it was available for download. You can download the PSP version, and it's just as good as the PS2 version. But yeah, it's like a top-down top down shooter. A lot of people mention this in like Hidden Gems videos and stuff, but yeah, it was like a top-down shooter set in like futuristic Russia. You have like melee shooting attacks and you have like special attacks. You can get different guns. Um, so the bosses are like kind of like bullet hell style. It's really good, yeah. So so good I got it twice. This next one as well, I don't really see like a lot of people talk about it too much, but it's Hurdy Gurdy. And the graphics in this game are like absolutely like beautiful. The frame rate suffers a little bit in places, I'm not gonna lie, but graphically speaking, this for me is one of the best looking games it's it's that cell shaded approach again i think that for that era the cell shaded stuff looked really good but it's like you playing like a disney game almost like the way the characters moved and stuff and the premise of the game is like you're herding all these animals into like coops and there's like bigger animals that will eat the small animals you've got to try and save them and you can get all these like special items and stuff that help you herd different types of animals that kind of have like different criteria and and ways that you'll kind of herd them into the pens. But yeah, it's really good. Again, like like I said before, the frame rate does kind of suffer a little bit. What I was hoping to do is, I've not really tried it yet, but my old laptop, I got a PS2 emulator working, and I literally just put the CD in, and I was basically playing it in like HD. It was, re it was really good, except it ran like absolute garbage. The laptop just wasn't up to it. I think my new one is, but unfortunately it doesn't have a disk drive. <laughs> So I might have to buy like a disk drive separately, plug that into the laptop and then see if maybe I can get this running on an emulator because this is one that I really do want to play again. If not, then I'll just play it on the regular PS2 and um, yeah, we'll see how far we get with that. Okay, next one as well. Uh, this is this is similar situation to Hurdy Gurdy. It's a really good game. Metal Arms glitch in the system. I think this is on the GameCube and the Xbox as well. You can't really see much there really, but you kind of, it's like a third person shooter. You play as like a robot going, picking up all these different weapons, just blasting stuff to bits. It's really fun. The PS2 version, again, does suffer with quite a few frame rate issues. It's not unplayable. I, I did play it quite a bit and it was all right, but yeah, just something to look out for there. But yeah, th this is another game I don't really see like people talking too much about. Okay, the next one here. Oh, the bloody case is damaged. I, I, I said this because I buy these secondhand. They're not in the greatest of conditions, but I still got them. Yeah, it's Taito Legends 2. I actually got this purely just for like one game, which uh, it's on the back here. Let's have a look. I'll know the name when I see it. It was like a shooter game. I think it was Darius Gaiden. I think that was the one. But there's also some like pretty good, other pretty good games on here as well. The one with the fish there, I think that's Darius Gaiden. That was quite a sought after game. But yeah, it's got Buster Move on there, it's got some puzzle games. 
Yeah, the big the big games on here are saying Puzzle Bobble 2, Darius Gaiden, Space Invaders DX. I can take that or leave it, to be honest. But it's got like a dungeon crawler on there that was in the arcades. Uh, and it's really good. If I, let's see if I can find the name on there. I think it might have been Dungeon Magic. But yeah, I'll just show you again. It was like Dungeon Magic would be the one be on the bottom left on, on your screen. It's like this isometric dungeon crawler. That that was an awesome game. Balls hard because it was like an arcade game. But yeah, there's some like absolute quality gems on this bad boy. I picked this one up recently. Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Wear of it. I what, didn't really know what to expect with it because I just wanted a Wallace and Gromit game. It plays pretty good. I've been playing it quite a lot recently. You're basically like capturing all the rabbits that have like escaped. And then at night there's like wear rabbits and wear versions of animals. And yeah, it's like a, most of the objectives are like to herd the animals into like into like these kind of grids where they get sucked into the big uh, pest control van because you, you like doing pest control work. It's really good actually, it's quite a charming little game. Again, frame rate is not amazing at places, but it doesn't make it unplayable, it's still enjoyable. What I found with this was there's some areas you'll go into the area and it's like, right, cap capture a hundred rabbits and it's really hard, it's really challenging. Like you get five minutes to do it and you'll pass it like getting say 60 rabbits. But it took me so many, so many tries. Like sometimes I was one rabbit off when I just ran out of time. Eventually I did it with like five seconds to spare. But yeah, if you want to like 100% this game, it does take like a fair bit of skill. So yeah, that's Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Wear Rabbit. A lot of people talk about this 113. Not giving it too much of a play yet. I know they did a HD remaster recently and apparently it was a bit pants. I've not played too much of this. I, I keep meaning to give it a go because a lot of people bang on about it. I just haven't got around to it yet. And I just got the platinum version because it was cheaper for me to get. A racing game now. Another kind of kart race style. Space race. It's like Looney Tunes. Basically Looney Tunes in space. I don't even know what possessed me to get it. Sometimes I just see these things randomly. I'm like, oh, that looks cool. One pound. Yeah, I'll pick that up. So... Yeah, I'll give it a try at some point. This next one was recommended as a bit of a hidden gem. I've only played a tiny bit of it. Graphically, it's like really impressive. I think it might have been, was it Sega? No, it's not Sega, but it, it looks like something Sega would put out. It's called Spy Fiction. And from what I remember, there's like two different characters you can play as with like different skills, but you can kind of like camouflage yourself as the enemy. And... Yeah, there's a difference in, in their actual abilities. Like, though, I think one can camouflage and he, he like has a voice changer as well, whereas the other one doesn't have a voice changer, but maybe like the camouflage lasts longer. There's, there's something like that. There's, like, it's been that long since I played it, but it was such a unique game. It's very hard to describe, but you can probably pick it up pretty cheap, so just like check it out. I'll probably give this more of a play sometime soon because really like I don't have a lot to say about it at the moment just because I can't really remember what the experience was like it was that long ago. This one was a good deal although yeah, it's naff condition as usual but as per my PS2 collection the box is a bit like bloody chewed and, and yellowish but I guess it's looked after the games inside and it's the agent agent collection golden eye rogue agent not even played that yet and everything or nothing I actually bought it for everything or nothing I just thought, I'll get the double pack because, like, it saves me a bit of money and I get both games. So, everything or nothing, I used to have that when I was younger. It was awesome. I don't know if I had it on GameCube or something, but it's basically its own standalone Bond game. It wasn't off any of the films or anything. There's some, you could, loads of different scenes, like you were, you were racing a motorbike, you were racing the Aston Martin at times, there was like shooting sections, hand-to-hand -hand sections, stealth sections. It's one of these games that tries to be a jack of all, but it actually does a fairly good job of it. I booted it up pretty recently, and one thing I did notice was the controls were like, not very intuitive. I never really remembered it as being like that, but yeah, when I played it recently, they took some getting used to, but it's not a massive negative. There's also like a two-player co-op mode, which was really good, where you could just like go through like a set uh, mission. You'd have like a set path you'd go down, but you could just co-op like taking out the guards and stuff. Really fun. Uh, Golden Eye Rogue Agent. 
not even I'm, I've not even played it yet. I've seen like videos on it and stuff, but I've not really like give it a go. That's something I'll try it again someday. I'm not too mad on like the first person shooters on the PS2 just because I find the with the analog and everything it's a bit stiff. It's like if they ever released it on the PC, I'll just download it and play it on my laptop because mouse and keyboard for first person shooter like is pretty good. These days it's it's not too bad now. Like you know, if I play Halo on the Xbox or something, I really don't mind the analog because the analogs are just a lot more sensitive now. It still doesn't quite be mouse and keyboard from one but it's, it's definitely passable. Okay, Crash Twin Sanity. Just because I wanted like a Crash Bandicoot platformer. I believe this is the one where you like tighten the old cortex or something through the through the levels. Not actually played it yet, but picked it up, looked decent. This next one I wanted a game that would kind of like challenge me. I like having some puzzle games sometimes. Bombastic. You can probably pick this one up really cheap. Graphically, it looks pretty decent, but I mean, there's not really a lot going on on the screen, I guess, so they could probably invest a bit more into the graphics, but you kind of like roll around on top of dice. You're like a little character running on top of the dice, and as you run, the sides change, and you have to get the tops of the dices to match to like kind of like destroy the dices. And in the actual campaign mode, you're kind of going along this like trail, and there's dice ahead of you, and you've got to kind of do your movement so that the dice lands in the right way when you go next to it. It's kind of hard to describe, but yeah, if you want something that's going to like make you think a little bit, uh, Bombastic's like pretty good. Another thing about it as well I noticed is, um, yeah, it actually taught me something about dice. I never knew that like both opposite sides add up to seven, and once you know that, you kind of know what side is coming next when you're going to flip over the dice. So that was interesting. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. It's just a quality dungeon crawler game. I want Dark Alliance 2, but man, that is getting, getting pricey now. So yeah, not much to say about that one. Next one is another racer and Wacky Races starring Dastardly and Muttley. Used to watch this on like TV like years ago. I've not, I've not played it yet. I, actually, I think you might have to play as Dastardly. Oh no, it does look like you can play as the other characters as well. But yeah, it just looks interesting, thought I'd pick it up. Again, I really need to like go through these cases, get the stickers off, uh, just give them a, a good wipe down. It's like I get them, I unwrap them and just like pff, throw it in the pile, I'll play that again sometime. But yeah, like getting them out now, like, I need to give these a bit of TLC. Turok Evolution, played it for a bit, I'm gonna be honest, thought it was a bit crap, but it was cheap, so I picked it up. Soul Reaver 2, played it for a bit. Yeah, it's pretty pretty decent game, to be honest. I need to give this one some more time. Action platformer style. Yeah, I did enjoy what little I played of it. I just, I just got so many games now, it's really hard to kind of like commit my time to some sometimes. I've kind of made a commitment to myself recently that I'm gonna finish Accuser Judgment before I move on to anything else, at least anything else on the PS4. So Yakuza Judgment now is my game on the PS4. And I'm nearly finished. I'm, I'm so close now. I'm in like the last probably couple of hours of the game, but I want to finish off all the additional segments and stuff. So yeah, it's getting a bit nitty gritty now, to say the least. Finally, again, I have two copies of this game. Which copy is this one? This is the English copy, okay. I bought this one, I bought this one in French by accident, I found it for, because you, you, you can't really get this too cheap now, I found it for like 20 quid, I was like, oh my god, steal, picked it up without even thinking, bloody French version, and there's no option for like different languages in the game, but yeah, this is Steambot Chronicles, this is the English version, yeah, I, I think I, this is decent nick as well, other than the sticker on it, yeah, this game was like, oh, it was awesome, you pilot like, a, they call them Trotmobiles, like a walker. You can equip different weapons to it, you can do mini games, like, I think there was just like some pool in there, if I remember correctly. You were in a band, you could play instruments. Definitely like a bit of a quirky game. I remember like, in the main menu, you go into the main menu and, and it's, you get, it's, I don't know if it's like a anime Japanese thing, but it just goes like, Steam Bad Chronicles. No, it doesn't do that. It goes, it just says something random, like, it says, like, got a stone in your shoe? Steam Bad Chronicles. Just been to the toilet? Steam Bad Chronicles. Got a song in your heart? 
Steambad Chronicles. Maybe not those exact phrases, but like it's, it's it's really weird. But weird in a good way. Like I remember I played quite a bit of this and, and I found like a pimp suit. And you, you've got all these different dialogue options as well through the game. Like you can basically just not take the game seriously at all. But the different dialogue options you choose actually kind of dictate the different endings you get. It's, it's really interesting. It's definitely a charming game. The only negative I would give to this game is you get to like, like a couple of hours in, maybe even an hour into the game, you get to this like big city area. And when you get there, it's like you can't just run around. There's like different segments of the city. So if you want to go to those other segments, you have to get in your Trotmobile and then you like pick from a menu where you want to go. But then you have to wait. You have to, your Trotmobile will go into traffic, get into traffic, walk really slowly along the road. But here's the thing, like, it stops at the lights. So you stop at the lights and you're like... <sighs> then the lights change and you... And then you stop at the next set of lights and you're like, Jesus! Like, it just takes you ages. Absolutely ages. Other than that though, it's actually a pretty amazing game. I got like quite a few hours in, I was playing quite a bit. I'm definitely going to go back to it. I think I'm actually going to start it again because I feel like if I go back now, I can't really remember what the hell's going on. But yeah, I got to a bit where you could challenge this guy. He was like the ex-arena champion for Trotmobile fighting because they have like an arena in this game as well where you can kind of fight up the ranks. And I challenged him and he just absolutely obliterated me. And <laughs> I couldn't beat him. And I just didn't have the patience to like kind of just work hard like you're supposed to do and go back and fight him again. But I think this time around I will do. The thing is with the shop deals as well is the controls are very like, like you use each analog stick as almost like your right and left leg. So like, for example, if you want to go straight forward, do both sticks forward. If you want to turn right, then you have to kind of hold the left stick forward and then the right stick back and it'll turn your chop deal around. So yeah, I believe that's how it works anyway. So the controls are like, they're not clunky, they're like they were done that way on purpose and they, they take some skill to master, but it's quite cool. I'm not going to call it a negative because I actually think it, it works the game quite well. But yeah, definitely, I can't really give that game enough praise other than the stupid waiting at the light sections. But I can, maybe they did that for realism, I don't know. But anyway, it's a really good game. So yeah, that's it. That's another, I think, like 21 games something I covered there. So I think I've got like another 20 or so left. I'll blast them out at some point. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if so, like, subscribe, and see you again next time. Bye. Then the lights change and you. Steam Bad Chronicles.